You're listening to this week's episode of the Vacation Rental Business in Today's World podcast. You're about to start transforming your business and life with the information found here. We interview some of the greatest and most influential minds in the vacation short-term rental industry and supporting businesses. The information found here is a combination of brain science, transformational thinking, safety and loss prevention, and vacation short-term rental knowledge and experiences all rolled into one to help you and your business to achieve levels you never thought possible. I am glad you are here, and now please welcome your host, Eric Thibodeau. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Safer VR's podcast. I'm your host, Eric Thibodeau, and I'm glad you're here. This week, uh, this week I'm in Nashville at the Short-Term Rental Wealth Conference. Uh, it's a, a new conference, and I'm interested to attend and meet and uh, talk to different people here. We had an event uh, already on, on Monday evening that I attended, and met some new people, met some familiar people from some of the other conferences and and associates. So it's good to be here and to learn and to meet a whole group of different people. So I'm excited to be here. One of the things that you may hear here uh, while I'm recording, it's kind of an interesting thing here in Nashville. You know, since I've been sitting in the hotel room, I've just heard, you know, fire trucks going by quite a bit. And either, you know, being a former firefighter, either there's a heck of a lot of calls in the Nashville area. Or the second part is that they do have here these like mobile bars where people get on these trucks and trailers and they just drive around here in Nashville and they have sirens that sound like fire trucks. So uh, if you hear the siren activation uh, outside or maybe in the distance, I, I don't know if it's if it's really an emergency, you know, that the fire department's responding to or one of the mobile bars. But I thought it was kind of interesting uh, about those. But as we get started here, I just wanted to, I was reflecting here this past week, I was coming back from uh, Gulf Shores, where our property management business is. And I was listening to a podcast and I was changing lanes. Uh, and I thought it was pretty interesting. Uh, the podcast was talking about blind spots. And as I was signaling to switch lanes, I, I looked over to see if there was a car in the lane. And I didn't see a car. However, my my truck has these uh, devices that monitor the lanes and the traffic. And in my side view mirror on the passenger side, I could see that there was, it was lit up with a little orange car. So I could tell that there was a car in the lane next to me. However, I didn't see it at all. I kind of then slowed down, looked further. You know, I kind of leaned in towards the steering wheel and then I could see the car. So the car was clearly in my blind spot and and I didn't see it. However, the truck sensors picked it up and alerted me to this. And I got to thinking about, hey, you know, in our lives, uh, we we have blind spots, right? We all have blind spots. And these are areas or subjects where we can't see an issue like that car that was in the lane when I was trying to move over. And some of these could be subconscious or limiting beliefs that, that hold us back. Uh, in our particular, on a particular subject or topic. And so I, I wanted to talk a little bit about that and go into this issue around b- blind spots and then focus on three words, three words uh, we need to be familiar with. And they are, see if you're ready, the first is awareness, the second is understanding, and the third is knowing. And so over these next three weeks, I'm going to talk about each one. And the first one is awareness, and we'll cover them through the podcast. So today, our topic is about awareness, and it kind of fits in with the blind spots, right? I mean, I wasn't aware that this car was in my lane, but when I did become aware, I didn't switch lanes. I slowed down, I waited for the car to move, and then I switched lanes. So in life, right, we have blind spots and things that are holding us back. And the first key to everything in our life, everything starts with awareness, right? We as humans don't take action unless we are aware of a problem, right? And you just pick a subject about, you know, when I become aware that uh, I'm not feeling well, I start to, you know, take actions. Maybe I sleep well, I call in sick, whatever the situation, right? In our businesses, 
how are we responding, right? And I, I like to word, use the word respond. We get to choose between respond and react. And responding is more of a control in how we are more. And then reaction is I'm not really thinking about it. I'm just doing things. And maybe it's making or could make the situation worse. It could make it better. But responding is more always typically more appropriate. So everything starts with awareness. So I, I noticed, for example, when I was traveling here to Nashville, I do travel a lot, as you know. I observe a lot. To, and one of the things I observe is people's awareness. I find in today's world, people are easily distracted and not aware, particularly of their surroundings. I see it in the airport. You know, people walk and stop in the middle of the walkway. People are not aware where they're going and bumping into other people. People are not aware of, you know, there's people in wheelchairs. People are not aware of many things. And it's, it's interesting, maybe this is a blind spot. Often it could be distractions, right? Because distractions, when we become distracted and then we react to certain things, it creates these blind spots start to appear. But if we're aware of the situation, I'm aware that someone has stopped in front of me. I either stop myself or I move to the right. I'm aware of people in wheelchairs. I'm aware of, I try to be aware, I'm aware of different things. So really everything starts with awareness, right? So how can we improve if we don't recognize or we're not aware of our blind spots? So this is really key. Awareness is really interesting. Triggers our brain to be on the lookout for certain things. So take for, for an example here, you know, if, if you really loved red cars and you bought a red car and now you're driving around your red car and all of a sudden you see all these red cars. And you said, I, I never saw these red cars before. And what happened is your brain now is aware of red cars because it knows it triggers something in your, in your reticular activating system is what it's called to be on the lookout for red cars. Now, maybe you saw red cars, but you didn't process red cars in your, your mind before, your brain. But now you've told your brain to be looking for red cars and all of a sudden they're everywhere right so you're aware you're and so basically it also demonstrates how the power that you have to be aware and to command your brain to respond to certain activities like the red car okay so now we look at these issues and we see these cars everywhere so now what if this is your your reticular activating system and basically the situation we described about the red car it started with a thought, right? It started with a thought. Everything in your life starts with a thought. So you said, hey, you had the thought about red cars. You had a thought about whatever. But in our red car example, it starts like with the red car. And then that's how your brain starts to then transform that into be able to find these things. So if we now have this basis about being aware, we have blind spots, we can become aware of them. We know that we can command and control our brains to begin to look at certain things for us. And we know it starts with a thought. So let me ask you this. What are your thoughts on safety? What are your thoughts about revenue management? What are your thoughts about finances in your vacation rental business? So I'd encourage you to write down these thoughts, not while you're driving in your car, but later write down these thoughts, right? And then Look for these thoughts that create these negative connotations, like, uh, you know, I am not good at safety. I don't agree with the revenue management philosophy. I don't believe revenue management works. I don't believe pricing tools work. I'm not making enough money in my business. I have too many expenses. All these things that may be coming up for you are thoughts, and we call them ants automatic negative thoughts. And these ants are crawling everywhere in our brain. And then something triggers them, a thought, your brain, you, you see something, a thought happens, and it's, it could be an automatic negative thought. So we can review why you're having these thoughts. Now, thoughts pop into our minds all the time, and they may or may not mean anything. But what if they did? What if they did mean something? 
write down these thoughts and, and then as we go through the next few weeks, we can begin to explore these thoughts. You see, I said, everything starts with a thought. So what if you had a thought about, I don't, I don't agree with revenue management or I don't like our revenue management approach. That could be a factual statement, right? But there could be emotional motion. There are emotions with it. There could be a belief there. And if there's not a belief today, that thought of, I don't like revenue management. I don't like our pricing tool. I don't like whatever it is around revenue management or safety or finances. If it's not a belief, you're forming a belief, right? When you speak into, you speak your words, you speak things into existence, just like you told your brain, hey, I love red cars. I bought a red car. And all of a sudden, your brain is looking for red cars. Now, just like you speak these automatic negative thoughts into existence, and basically a belief is a thought with emotion over time creates a belief. So are you forming a belief? And what kind of belief are you forming? One that's going to serve you? Or are you forming a belief that is going to impact you? See, because these beliefs then affect our decisions. These decisions form our actions that then drive our results. And sometimes this happens, as you know, we've spoken about this. It happens subconsciously and automatically, and maybe we don't even recognize it's occurring, right? This is why awareness is important. And many times, even my own self have experienced this about, I'm not aware of something that's holding me back until someone points it out, or I have a coaching session and someone says, hey, this Tell me more about this subject here. So now you're becoming aware of these issues. And once you're aware of these issues and how to prevent them, you know, it, it's really it's really powerful. You know, whether it's safety or revenue management or your finances, it's all the same. So I can teach you about safety, as you know, safety professional. I can show you the hows around everything in safety that impacts your vacation rental businesses. You know, you just pick a topic, fire extinguishers fire alarm, smoke detectors, tripping hazards, all the different rail heights and lengths and tread depths on your stairs and swimming pool safety, electrical safety, everything, I can help you there. And there's others in the industry that can help you too, right? And you may already know all this information and details about how to protect your property and how to protect your guests. And it may not be implemented. Why? What about revenue management? Is your, are your revenue management techniques, tools, pricing tools, revenue management meetings, all these things we know that they service, but maybe we don't do them. Why? Why aren't our finances where they are? So now you're aware of these issues. Next, let's work to understand, which is part two, understand more about the why next week. See, this is what allows safer VRs to be different and more effective, right? We can certainly teach things around safety, everything safety and loss prevention in your business. But you have to ask yourself, which is what I've been looking at and seeing, and I saw it in my previous world in oil and gas too. All this information is available. All this information has been taught. People un know it and understand it. They're aware of it, yet it's not implemented. Back to our question of why. It's helping you to discover your blind spots. This is what allows safer VRs to be different and more effective. It's helping you, right? Because only you can help you, help you discover your blind spots in whatever part of your life or business that's holding you back. So I'm looking for some members, founding members for my Awakening Vacation Rental membership group this week. Doors are open. I need to have approximately 10 to 20 people. I would love for you to join. And while we'll talk about safety, and I call it the first level of safety, which is our awareness and information, basic information that's readily available out there. But then we talk about understanding and then we speak about knowing and who it is and how that shows up and how you show up. This is what makes Safer VRs different than any other company out there. And I'd like you to check it out. Go to www.safervrs.com. Go to the membership group. Take a look. Sign up. Send me an email, eric at safervrs.com. And let me know how I can help you say yes to yourself. I hope you have a great week. Return back next week for the second version where we dig more into understanding that now we know we're aware there's ants that are impacting our business. And maybe they were blind spots, but now we're aware. And we're going to begin the journey to understand next week. Have a great week. Hope to have great things to report from uh, 
the STR Wealth Conference. And I look forward to seeing you and hearing from you soon. Have a great week and take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Safer VR's podcast with Eric Thibodeau. If you enjoy this, I would love you to join my Facebook group, The Safer Vacation Rentals, for more of the same. You can also join our email list at www.safervrs.com.